Dr. V. R. S. Sampath, President of the Madras Development Society, distinguished speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank the Madras Development Society Chennai and Shattak Kadir, Tamil Law Journal, for coming together to organize this webinar conference on UN at 75 and beyond. I would like to commend Dr. V. R. S. Sampath, President of the Madras Development Society, and the moving spirit behind this event for this very timely webinar. I would also like to acknowledge and welcome the other distinguished speakers in this conference, particularly my senior in the Foreign Service, Ambassador T. P. Srinivasan, who has been a major player in India's contribution to the United Nations and in the shaping of India's policy towards the United Nations. The 75th anniversary of the United Nations is indeed a momentous occasion and holds a special place for India. I would like to remind the participants that even before we gained independence, India was among the founding signatories of the UN Charter at the historic San Francisco Conference. It was Sir Arcot Ramaswamy Mudaliyar and Sir V. T. Krishnamachari who signed this charter in June 1945 on behalf of India. Sri Ramaswamy Mudaliyar also had the very unique distinction of serving as the first president of the United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC. It would not be an exaggeration if I say that India had played a pivotal role in shaping the agenda of the United Nations over the decades, including by taking the lead on a variety of issues like decolonization, apartheid, human rights, disarmament, environment, terrorism, development, and others. We have had many firsts to our credit, and our contribution has been widely appreciated and respected. This year, however, we have had COVID, which has not only tragically taken away lives of people around the world, but also threatened to set back the progress the United Nations has made over the years. For example, the pandemic threatens to set back the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which we have all committed ourselves to achieve by 2030. Consequently, even as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, we have also been given a rude reality test by the pandemic, which makes it imperative that we use this occasion to introspect on where and which direction the United Nations is heading and see where we can enhance and prioritize our focus. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that the pandemic has given us an opportunity to build back better in the post-COVID world. But what indeed do we do to build back better? At the very least, we need to recapture the spirit of constructive cooperation to come up with innovative and inclusive solutions to foster peace and security and to foster development. However, this constructive cooperation cannot come in a vacuum. It can only come about when there is greater accommodation of diverse interests and when there is an attempt to be more inclusive. This will automatically mean that the UN has to reflect the growing reality of our time, which is that the United Nations bodies, particularly the Security Council, should be more representative of the current reality to be more meaningful. This is precisely what Prime Minister Modi underlined in the UN General Assembly last month, when he made a call that reform in the responses, in the processes, in the character at the United Nations is the need of the hour, and that India can no longer be kept out of the decision-making structures of the United Nations. The issue is not as much multilateralism versus unilateralism, but status quo versus reform. Consequently, when we build back better, the reform of the Security Council should be central in order that we have a United Nations which is more inclusive, more responsive to diverse interests and therefore more capable of fostering the spirit of constructive cooperation. We still have a long way to traverse down this road. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the 
preeminent purposes of the UN Charter is to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. The world's gravest danger today is the unabated spread of terrorism. When sponsored and supported by states, terrorism becomes another means of waging war. Even COVID times has not dimmed the enthusiasm of some countries to support terrorism. In fact, they have taken advantage of the pandemic to indulge in terrorism, including cross-border terrorism, underestimating the resolve of countries like India to tackle this menace. The international community, particularly the United Nations, should take a firm stand against terrorism since it threatens the very basis of democratic and peaceful societies like ours. Apart from being in the forefront of tackling terrorism, India has always been a major factor to promote and maintain peace and security. As our external affairs minister mentioned recently, India remains committed to upholding the rules-based international order underpinned by the rule of law, transparency, freedom of navigation in the international seas, respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty, and peaceful resolution of disputes. We will seek to promote maritime security given our strong interest in Indo-Pacific and in Africa. The UN peacekeeping operations have played an important role in maintaining peace and security by protecting civilians and preventing human rights violations arising from conflict. India has a proud legacy of shouldering this responsibility by not only providing the largest number of peacekeeping troops, but also having lost more peacekeepers than any other country. We must work towards greater direction, safety and professionalism in UN peacekeeping mandates. And when we build back better in the post-COVID period, we need to put the human being back at the center of our focus in the United Nations. The initiatives taken by India domestically in recent times have put this human being at the center of our development. We have focused on people-centric solutions. The pandemic has reminded us that we need to look at people-centric socio-economic issues, like for example, health infrastructure, to build strong foundations for a democratic and pluralistic society. The United Nations and its member states have to adopt a multi-dimensional and a whole of society approach to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030 for the welfare of all, especially those most vulnerable to poverty. We need to make this decade a decade of action to achieve the SDGs and not let the pandemic decide our fate. Ladies and gentlemen, India has recently been elected to the UN Security Council for the term 2021-22 with overwhelming majority, attesting to the important initiatives taken by India to reach out to all countries around the world in a spirit of friendship, cooperation and development partnership. The priorities we have set for ourselves during our stint in the Security Council reflect our desire to make this a better world. Our priorities include fighting terrorism, including cross-border terrorism, strengthening peacekeeping, taking up the agenda of reformed multilateralism, especially in the context of the reform of the Security Council, using technology, especially digital technology, to bring about change in the lives of people, greater involvement of women and youth, and strengthening peace building through development, human rights, democracy, and institution building. Given our strong credentials in forging developmental partnership with fellow developing countries, we have also partnered with the United Nations to contribute to South-South cooperation. Three years ago, India established the US dollars 150 million India-UN Partnership Fund at the United Nations to support projects in developing countries and contribute to the achievement of sustainable development goals and in the recent past to fight the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought great misery to hundreds of thousands of lives. But it is also provides the UN with an opportunity to build back better. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity. India has always been a force for peace, progress and prosperity. 
And I'm confident that, as Swami Vivekananda once said, India's aspirations will go on increasing till it engulfs the whole of humanity. I once again thank Dr. Viara Sampath for inviting me and getting all of us together. I wish this virtual conference all success. Thank you.